In this video we're going to review the bones and surface markings of the pelvic girdle and the leg. We're going to start by looking at one single oscoxa. Okay. This is made a composite bone made of three bones. This is the ilium, this is the ischium, and this is the pubis bone. Okay. Then the ilium, right here you have the iliac fossa. Here you have the iliac crest. At the end of the iliac crest, which you can usually, when you feel, okay, when you feel your pelvic bone in the front, the anterior, this is called the anterior superior iliac spine, which is pretty easy to palpate. You come down this little ridge. Here you have the anterior inferior iliac spine. That is not as easy to palpate. Down in here, you have what's called the acetabulum, which is actually, the acetabulum is actually made um, of, from all three of those bones. So that's where the head of the femur is going to articulate with the pelvic girdle. So iliac crest, anterior superior iliac spine, anterior inferior iliac spine, the acetabulum, and here you have the iliac fossa. Now looking at both together, again we have the acetabulum here, we have the ischium here, pubis bone here. Here's your other pubis bone. Between the two is a joint called the pubic symphysis. This opening here is called the obturator foramen. And on this you can also see the sacrum. And down in here you can see part of the coccyx. Again, acetabulum, pubis bone, pubis bone, the joint between it, the pubic symphysis, the ischium, and the obturator foramen. Looking posterior, there's a lot of letters here. General bone location is ilium, and here's your iliac crest. You can see the ischium here. You can't see the pubis bone very well, it's in front. You can see the sacrum and the coccyx here. What we're going to do is take a trip here, a little roller coaster ride down the back here going through the surface markings that you need to know. Right in here, is the posterior superior iliac spine. You go down a little ridge and you have the posterior inferior iliac spine. You go through around this little ridge here which is called the greater sciatic notch. You then come down to the ischial spine. There's then a little ridge right here which is the lesser sciatic notch and then you have the ischial tuberosity. Let's do the same thing but on this side. Here is your posterior superior iliac spine, your posterior inferior iliac spine, your greater sciatic notch, your ischial spine, your lesser sciatic notch, and your ischial tuberosity. One more time. Posterior superior iliac spine, posterior inferior iliac spine, greater sciatic notch, ischial spine, little curvature here is the lesser sciatic notch, and the ischial tuberosity. You can also see the obturator foramen on each side on this, and your sacrum and your coccyx. Now we're looking at the posterior hip, so here's your ilium, Here's your ischium. You can kind of see part of the sacrum here to get your bearings. Here is your femur. Right here is the head of the femur, which is going to articulate with that acetabulum. The hip joint's a much more secure joint than the shoulder because that acetabulum is pretty deep and so the head fits in there pretty snug. Here is the neck of the femur. And then we have the trochanters. Lateral, on your lateral side is what's called the greater trochanter. Posterior is the lesser trochanter. You can feel this pretty easily if you go right below your hip bone, place your fingers and if you turn your leg in and out, rotate it, you'll feel that greater trochanter will swivel underneath your fingers. A lot of muscles attached to these two trochanters. 
Now posterior, you can kind of see the beginning here. If you go down the posterior femur, you'll feel a ridge. And that ridge is called the linea aspera. Okay? It's also an attachment point for many muscle groups. So down the posterior aspect of the femur is the linea aspera. One more time, head, neck, greater trochanter, which is lateral, and lesser trochanter, which is more posterior. Here we're looking at an anterior view of the knee. Let's do the bones first. This is going to be the distal end of the femur. Here is the tibia. Here is the fibula. The fibula is going to be lateral. The tibia is going to be medial. Do not screw up the spelling of those two. It's tibia with a T, okay. fibula with an F. Don't switch those two. One way to remember is a fibula is the smaller of the two bones. And if you tell a small lie, it is a fib. So smaller bone, fibula. This part of the fibula right here is called the head of the fibula. It articulates there with the tibia. Make sure when you're reviewing the bones, you pay attention to what the head of the fibula looks like compared to what the lateral malleolus looks like, which I'll show you in another slide. Up here we have the femur. Again, tibia is medial, so this is the medial side. So this is the media epicondyle above the condyle. This is the medial condyle. This is the lateral epicondyle of the femur, and this is the lateral condyle. We go to the tibia, there's going to be a medial condyle and a lateral condyle. One way to make sure you don't screw up medial and lateral is, let's say you don't have the tibia and fibula to use, find the head of the femur. The head of the femur is going to be medial, okay, and that'll help you make sure you don't screw up medial and lateral. I'll show you how you can find the medial side of the tibia in a second if you don't have the whole knee. Come down here to the tibia. We have a structure that is located on the anterior portion of the tibia and you can feel it. If you go right below your patella, the patella is right here, you'll feel a bump. That is called the tibial tuberosity and that's a major attachment point for some of the quadricep muscles. And if you go down anteriorly down the tibia, you're going to feel a ridge. It's the one you whack into the table that it really hurts. That is called the anterior border of the tibia. So medial side, lateral side, fibula, tibia, patella, femur. Always take the time to coordinate or orient the bone correctly. I know it's te it happens when you're taking a test, you kind of freak out, but spend some extra time making sure you got your medial lateral and your anterior posterior correct. Now if we come down to the foot, if we come down to the foot, here's your tibia, which is medial, and here's the fibula, which is lateral. This end of the fibula is called the lateral malleolus. This is the end you need to make sure you look at this versus the head, in this picture, the head is more boxier, it's more square. The malleolus tends to be more flat, okay, it tends to be more flattened out. So fibula is on the lateral side, so this is the lateral malleolus. Here is your tibia on the medial side, this is your medial malleolus. Again, look for this when you're looking at the tibia, and if you know this is the medial side, when you come up, you'll have an easier time knowing that you're looking at the medial condyle when you're looking at the upper portion of the tibia. Now your next set of bones are your tarsals. Okay. You had the carpals by, in your hand, here you have the, the tarsals. Tarsals remember toes, okay, tarsals toes. You need to know the names of some of these. The first tarsal you need to know is the calcaneus, which is the heel bone. The bone or the tarsal that articulates with the fibula and the tibia is called, is called the talus. Right below that talus, again we're anterior, is the navicular bone. 
Below that navicular, you have three bones here, which are the cuneiforms. And then most lateral over here, you have the cuboid. Okay, you have the cuboid. So again, here's your lateral side, fibula side. Here's the medial side. Calcaneus, talus, navicular, cuneiforms, and cuboid. You have the metatarsals here, and just like in your fingers, you have the phalanges here. Okay. So phalanges, you get to use twice. Woohoo! Okay, so tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. So make sure you review this. Again, these pictures are helpful, but it, it's even more helpful to have the bone in your hand so you can practice orient, orienting it correctly so you don't make mistakes, so you don't make stupid mistakes. We want to avoid those at all costs. So spend some time with your hands on the bones, orienting them correctly to make sure that you know it. And again, you have a practice test you can use for this, and you also have the worksheets you can do.